everybody. Welcome back to Society Small Talk. Um, I want to say a big thank you to all the people that are tuning back in and have subscribed. And those of you that are just watching, if you want to consider subscribing to get all my new updates and new episodes. On Society Small Talk, we just talk about uh, all the new pattern releases, anything that's got me inspired this week, any new fabric that I might have and maybe want some ideas what to do with. I also welcome comments. If you guys have got any ideas or any suggestions of patterns you'd like to see me sew, um, please um, pop them in the comments below. If you watch my last episode, you'll see that I actually sew the new uh, By Hand London Hannah dress. This is the top version I've got on today and I'll pop some photos up of that if you didn't see the last episode. It's a really great little top to wear over jeans, more of a casual everyday look. Uh, a few other things I've been sewing recently that I'd like to share with you guys I think you might find uh, really interesting because it's a free pattern uh, is the peppermint ruffle top. Um, this one I've got here on the mannequin. I'll pop some pictures of me wearing also. It was a really uh, lovely sew and I've done it in like a linen uh, slub cotton. And as I say, being a free pattern, you just go on the peppermint website to download that. All their patterns are free. I think I mentioned in a previous episode that if you're ever wanting a free pattern, the Peppermint website has about 15. So yeah, get onto them, download them. Even if you just store them for a while, you've always got them there. Yeah, the Peppermint ruffle top uh, is like a little sort of a crop version. It's got a really nice interfacing as well inside it. It sews up really, uh, it's quite a lovely sort of stabilised um, neckline, the V-neck. It's not as pointy as a normal v-neck with a little bit more scooped out. The sleeves, I just love that ruffle edge and I've left my edges raw for my fabric because I just think that it gives a lovely little effect to that. But yeah, you could add lace or anything onto those if you like that sort of boho looking sleeve. You could even leave the sleeves off if you wanted to have it more of a tank top. Um, but I've been wearing that over my lander tensile pants i actually made a pair of um another pair of landers i uh, in my last episode i'd made the the full length ones well now i've progressed on now i've got the fit right i've made the three-quarter collot style landers with the button fly front and the cord pair as well um in a caramel color cord and i cropped them quite sort of short so they're in between a, a collot um, below the knee and an ankle length and they are the most comfortable pants ever, especially because they've got slightly stretch um, in the pin cord. But you can use a non-stretch uh, woven mid to heavy weight, uh, bottom weight fabric as well. So, yeah, try the landers. As I say, when I started, I had a little bit of ups and downs with getting the fitting right because the waistband isn't actually curved on them. You may need to do a little bit of adjustment at the back, uh, either put a little dart in the back. Another thing I've sewn up this week too, I've um, looked at Tazuti patterns because I love their patterns. I've made a lot in the past from them. The Robbie pants. Um, I love wearing, I know it's a bit daggy, but elastic waisted pants I think are su super duper comfortable. Um, I was looking at the Sew House 7 um, free range slack, but I didn't have quite enough fabric for that. So the Robbie pants, I think I had one point six meters of a tensile denim and that was enough to make up these pants which are a really great comfortable and also transseasonal pants so yeah really quick so i had it done within half an hour so if you're after a practical pair of pants look at the robbie by tazuti patterns just touching on true bias which is the land of pants pattern company true bias um kelly has put out a um instagram post yesterday they're going to be releasing the lodo dress pattern in a an increased size range now so i think they're going to go up to size 30 with that that's a dress i made last year that i lived in uh, it's a, made of a jersey. It's got a lovely V-neck as well, the little cap sort of sleeve. It's a, like you can have a midi length or the shorter length. It's just like a great everyday um, sort of transseasonal dress that I think you could quite easily hack and adapt and put a sleeve on if you're wanting that. Um, it can be made of any sort of stretch fabric, um, more to the leaning into the mid weight stretch fabrics would work really well for it. But yeah, I really want to make more of those. So I think that's great that everyone can jump on the website, I think from tomorrow and see the, um, the new increased size range. Another thing too with Kelly from True Bias and Heather Lou from Closet Case Patterns have actually just uh, released for November the so the hashtag so frosting special, which was on every year, that everyone gets to go a bit wild with their fabric choices and colours. 
uh, and styles. So something that you wouldn't always, like not an everyday sew, something a bit more special. If you want to showcase your sewing ability um, or even just want to make a beautiful Christmas or New Year's gown that's got like sparkles or embroidery or something that is a bit more out there, a bit more special. And last year, Katie Cortman, um, Katie Cortman Art on Instagram, she actually, I think, won that challenge because she designed her own fabric on Spoonflower. She'd hand painted a fabric, designed it, and sewed up a beautiful dress in that. So it, it sort of gives people with that creative tendency the um, a reason to sew something that's a bit more wild than what they would normally do. Because let's face it, we all tend to sew practical garments that we're going to wear more than not. So if you've got the chance to sew something beautiful, um, luxurious sort of fabric, if you get your hands on something that you think, wow, if only I had somewhere special to wear that, uh, it's a chance for you to make that up and, and showcase it. So don't forget the hashtag SoFrosting2019 on Instagram is running at the moment. So I'm going to try and make something a little bit more um, out there than what I would normally make too that I'll um, yeah be able to show you guys on here. Yeah, so today, as you can see, I'm wearing my Hannah top in the linen print. I'm also wearing um, some earrings from a lovely maker that I found on Instagram. She is uh, an American lady who's now based in Australia. Her name's Jill, and she's from Blue Serendipity Designs. I'll pop a link to that. She makes the most gorgeous earrings, usually like a wooden base, and she has a love for Australian flora and fauna. So she'll have little animals and birds. And this one's got the little pink galah. I'll just show you up close. If you can see that. They're like a little wooden base. And she sometimes uses fabric or gets little pictures and designs them and, and paints them. And I just love her stuff. She's got a lot of stuff on Instagram and on Etsy store. So I've probably got about six pairs of her earrings. And I tend to really get them out in summertime when I'm wearing all those bright um, sort of summery uh, natural fibers. And I'll just, you know, brighten them up with a little earring. So look at her shop. And uh, as I said, I think she ships worldwide as well. So get onto her store. So there's a couple of patterns that I'm actually interested in sewing the next couple of weeks I'm um, yet to find fabric for. But the uh, style art pattern, I'm loving the Bonnie bundle. It's, it reminds me of an 80s style skirt and top that I'm sure um, sort of mums back when I was sort of probably in the, the, the early to mid 80s. It has a little button on the edge of the sleeves and the skirt has the button front and uh, it's, it's a really great, I think they can, you can buy it in a bundle for $22 on style art. Don't quote me on that. I'll, I'll have to look at that and I'll pop a link for that as well. Um, yeah, style, like I haven't made many of their patterns before. I've actually got maybe one or two that I've done and they don't have a really great set of instructions. So you probably need to be a bit more of an intermediate sewers to be able to tackle that. But a basic or a beginner pattern should be uh, fine. But I think this is more of a um, intermediate style pattern. One of my favorite people on Instagram that um, tends to be the style like queen, I would call her, is Birdie So Obsessed, and she's another Melbourne-based um, Instagram lady. She's actually a math school teacher by day, <laughs> and her hobby, her, her love is, of course, sewing, and she has the most beautiful um, garments and bags. Her quality is just incredible, Pre precision and, and detail. Maybe the math teacher comes into that, getting everything really accurate. I'm not sure, but she's got a tendency to make the most beautiful um polished garments and like uh, she'll tackle them the most difficult of sews um especially like blazers and um yeah, as I say handbags she's even making shoes at the moment on her Instagram I've watched that as well and I think she's yeah she's usually the star like expert so yeah look into her um her Instagram uh, if you want to get inspired with some style art goodies. So a couple of new pattern releases um I've mentioned the Hannah by, by Hannah London there's another jacket called the Ayora, I think it's pronounced. It's by Pauline Ellis Patterns. I am in love with that. I think they showed that on the Fold Line vlog last week. And I've got to say, if you love the Tamarack jacket, which is one of my favorites, I'll be doing an episode on that in the not too distant future. Um, the uh, Ayora jacket is a very similar, casual, easy to wear, quilty effect jacket that I just think will come up stunning. If you're wanting a more everyday casual sort of wear jacket more than a blazer or a really heavy coat 
it's sort of a medium weight warmth um, and with the tamarack same thing you can line that with a thicker batting um, like a, a really warm felt or even have it unlined so I think those sort of practical jackets are great for transseasonal wear uh, for autumn or for spring so yeah look at the fold line website the Pauline Ellis Aora jacket looks to be a winner for me so I think I mentioned the last episode too, we're doing a collaboration with um, Tamlin from Sewn on the Tine and Keely from Voice of Creative. We're doing a Shelby um, sew up together. So we're all doing a different version. I'm doing the romper version, which is the longer leg collot. I'll show you the fabric I've got picked out for that. So I've um, popped into Spotlight to get this uh, lovely viscose rayon, really drapey fabric, which is reminiscent of um, the pattern itself. It's a very 90s looking pattern. This um, large spot in the mustard background I think will come up uh, will come up beautifully hopefully so that's my next little adventure and I'll show you that close so that's for my Shelby so I'll be starting that hopefully in the next couple of days the next couple of fabrics I've got picked out were were actually picked out in mind for the Zadie jumpsuit my paper theory patterns um, but now I'm debating whether to do um, well I definitely had the mustard picked out the mustard drill for the Zadi, which I think will come, as I say, I'm a mustard fanatic. You can see that now. Love my mustard. So that'll come up hopefully really nice in the Zadi. This um, denim fabric I just fell in love with too. It's got the cheetah or like leopard print um, in, the, in the denim. I just thought that will come up really nice in the jumpsuit. But now I'm in two minds whether to make the Jenny overalls by closet case patterns because I thought maybe doing a collot like three quarter leg overall might look really great with this with a little white t-shirt underneath. Um, or if you guys could help me choose between those two patterns, I'd really appreciate that. So that's either the Jenny overalls or the Zadie jumpsuit. So yeah, it's hard making decisions sometimes. So that's my little So Society Small Talk episode today. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, and also thank you for all your support and I hope you have got some inspiration to get some sewing done this week. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.